Hello. Our video today is we're going to be looking at exponential growth and exponential decay functions. So before we get into growth and decay, let's look at what an exponential function is. An exponential function involves the expression b raised to the x power, where the base b is a positive number other than the number 1. It can't be 1. Why can't it be 1? So if we're talking about what the base is, if I have a base of 1, and let's say I raise it to the second power, well, 1 squared is 1. What if I took it and raised it to the third power? 1 cubed is still 1. No matter if I raise it to the 100 power, any number 1 raised to any power is simply equal to 1. So if my base is 1, regardless of what my exponent is, I'm always going to get a value of 1, which isn't helpful. That's why our base can't be 1. Now, if our function is an exponential growth function, so we're going to focus on growth here, it is where our base is going to be greater than 1. So we have a function here, f of x is equal to 2 to the x power. That means that x is going to be the exponent. So if I raise 2 to the negative third power. So first, let's think about this. We have negative exponents. We think all the way back to unit 5 at the beginning of the semester when we reviewed exponential rules. Negative exponents mean reciprocal. So it's really 1 over 2 cubed, which is going to be 1 eighth. So 2 to the negative second power is going to be 1 fourth. 2 to the negative first is 1 half. Anything to the 0 power is going to be just 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. All right, so we have our table of values. We're going to go ahead and plot this. So on our x-axis, we're going all the way to a positive 3, and we're going to a negative 3. So let's go ahead and plot those points. We're going all the way up to 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our first point is at negative three, one eighth. All right, so that's way down here. Negative two, one fourth, still way down here. All right, now we're at negative one half, zero, one, one, two, two, four, three, eight. So here's our function. And as I go here, it, my fractions were one half, one fourth, one eighth. Look at the behavior of the graph. What do you notice? Hopefully you notice that these numbers are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But no matter what I do, it's never going to be equal to zero. So what we have here is we have a horizontal asymptote. There's an asymptote at y equals 0. That's that horizontal line at y equals 0. So my graph is going to approach 0, but never actually get to 0. And of course, we call this exponential growth because as our x gets larger, our numbers are going to be growing exponentially. We go from 1 to 2 to 8. Oh, sorry, we went from 2 to 4 to 8. Because our base was 2, our numbers are going to be doubling each time. All right, so exponential growth is when our numbers are getting larger. Now we've got exponential decay. This is an exponential function whose base is between 0 and 1. So we want to be careful because with growth, we say, okay, it's because our base is greater than 1. So with the decay, we want to say it's less than 1. That's not true because negative numbers are less than 1. but we said in the very beginning we wanted a positive number other than 1. 
So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are between 0 and 1. This is the definition for decay. So this time we're going to use the function 1 half to the x power. So we have 1 half to the negative third. And again, remember those negative exponents. That means I'm going to be doing the reciprocal, which means it's really going to become 2 to the third, which gives us 8. 1 half to the negative second. That really means 2 squared, which gives us 4. 1 half to the negative first. That's just my reciprocal giving me 2. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the first is 1 half. 1 half squared is going to be 1 fourth. And 1, oops, 1 half cubed is going to be 1 eighth. So you can see it's similar numbers to what we had in the beginning in our first one. But now negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, Three, labeling our x-axis. We're, we're still going all the way up to 8. Cut that in half, 4. But now at negative 3, we're all the way up at 8. At negative 2, we're at 4. Negative 1, we're at 2. 0, 1. 1, 1 half, 2, 1 fourth, 3, 1 eighth. So with our exponential decay graph, as x gets larger, our numbers are going to get smaller. We still have that horizontal asymptote there at 0, though. So we still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. It's still approaching that value of 0 just from the other direction. All right, so there's the difference between growth and decay. Makes sense, right? Let's look a little bit closer at the graphs of these exponential growth and decay functions. It's a little bit smaller here. Maybe we can get more on the screen. Okay, so our first one here, we have y equals 4 times 5 raised to the x minus 1. Now, there's going to be some transformations happening here, but what we want to do is we want to be able to determine, is this a growth or a decay function? You may be thinking to yourself, well, it's getting larger, therefore it's growth, which is true. You can look at the graph and you can tell whether it's growth or decay. However, you also want to be able to determine this from the equation, because remember, it's about the base. This is the base of our exponential growth equation here. It's not going to be 20. I cannot multiply this by 4. It's 4 times 5. Only the 5 is getting the exponent. Therefore, my base is 5. So I know that this is going to be growth because the base is equal to 5. And therefore, the base is greater than 1. Because remember, growth or decay is determined by whether the base is greater than 1 or if it's decay, it's between 0 and 1. The horizontal asymptote on our graph here we can see is at 0. Horizontal line is at y equals 0. Domain and range. We haven't looked at domain and range in a while. We haven't talked about it. Remember, domain is your movement left and right. Well, this arrow right here tells me that I'm forever going to the left. This arrow is going up and to the right, so it's going to forever go to the right. So our domain is all real numbers. Your range is your movement going up and down. Well, my graph is never existing down here because of this asymptote. My graph is only going to be above that horizontal asymptote. And we're going to say it's greater than 0. We are not going to say greater than or equal to 0 because it can't be 0. 0 is the asymptote. It's that imaginary line that your graph approaches but doesn't touch. All right, so when we go to our second graph, again, we're going to concentrate where that exponent is. And in this case, we see our base here is at point 
2. We can also see in our graph that it is going to be a decay because as our x's get larger, our graph is getting smaller. Now we have a couple of different transformations happening here. Because that number out front is a negative 3, the negative, as always, is causing that reflection over the x-axis. This transformation right here is moving our graph down to. The exponent is what's telling us that our graph is going left to. And we could have looked at that in the first one. This means that we're going right one. We just don't really need to know that for our asymptote in our domain. What's important is this movement down to because we can see that our asymptote went down to in our graph. So we know this time that our graph is decay. We know that because our base is equal to 0 0.2, which means our base is between 0 and 1. That's how we know our graph is decay. Our horizontal asymptote, again, we can see that right there in our graph. We moved our graph down to, so our asymptote went from 0 to a negative 2. Our domain and range, our domain, we're still forever going to the right and forever going to the left, because remember, this means down and left, so all real numbers. But this time, our graph is existing below the asymptote because of that reflection. The asymptote is at a negative 2, so it is less than negative 2. It's below that asymptote. It can't be equal to a negative 2, so it's just less than, not less than or equal to. All right, that is all I have for you on growth and decay.